name is Prasad. I work for the product security team at Red Hat. And today I'm going to talk about a little bit about how the KVM virtualization stack look like. At, at Red Hat, I look, at, I look after the security issues in the virtualization and the kernel uh, projects. And in, in the process, I've, I've looked into certain details of the virtualization stacks, and I've tried to fix certain issues as well. And today, I'll, I'll share what I've learned over the course of time about how a KVM guest works in the stack. Okay. So for the overview, we'll look at the x86 execution environment. Then we'll look at the virtualization technology, which is there, which is used by the KVM module. We'll look, we'll look at the kernel virtual machine, how it uses the virtualization technology to provide services to the guest. And in the end, we'll look at the user space emulator, which is the QMU, which is used to create the guest environment for the users. Right? So if we, if we look at the x86 work execution environment, we, we have a processor. And in the, in the processor, we have a lot of Subcomponents like there is a execution, there is an instruction execution module. Then there is a there are certain control registers. There is, there is memory. There is an I/O unit which works to information to the disk. And and uh, on on top of the, all this hardware layer, there is an operating system, right? This operating system uses the uh, processor instructions to execute user programs, right? So let's take an example of a simple program. So when you say you want to print something on the console, so there are many things involved. So the, the, this this program will be uh, converted into a processor instructions like this, and then there is a console which is which is uh, to read and write to that console. You need a hardware driver which is used by the operating system. So just to print uh, a print a certain message on the console, a user program writes a statement like say printf, which is converted into a Operating system, kernel, operating system call, which is say write, and that write will communicate with the hardware driver, which will eventually put that information on the console, right? So this is uh, just a basic basic execution environment on the x86 system. Now let's imagine instead of this simple program, we want to virtualize or create an environment where you execute an operating system as it is in a virtual environment. Right? As we saw, operating system uses the hardware, which is like a processor, which has registers, which has memory, it has I/O unit. So, if we want to execute an operating system in a virtual environment, we'll have to create the same environment which is provided by the hardware. Right? So that's that's where the virtualization technology comes into picture. So Intel introduced the virtualization extensions on AMD. They call it secure virtual machines on ARM processors mode so what basically these technologies do is they they introduce more instructions in the processor which is used by the kernel kernel or the virtual machine monitor right to provide services to the guest environment so these instructions are called the virtualization extensions and there are instructions like VMX on VMX off and VM read write and these are used by the KVM module kernel virtual machine module to create a virtual environment which is used by the logical processor, which is in, in turn used by the KVM guest. right? So there are two modes of operation. Like we saw on the host environment in the operating system, you have a user space instructions or user space functions. And in the kernel, you have kernel space functions. right? Kernel, face, kernel space functions work in the supervisor mode or the root mode, whereas user space functions are at user level privileges. Right. Similarly, in the virtualization instructions, this set of instructions are divided into two modes. One is a VMX non-root operation. So when guest wants to execute certain instructions, they are executed at the non-root operation mode. Okay. And then there are VMX root operations, which are used by the KVM module, or the virtual machine monitor module, or the hypervisor, which is, which is like a privileged instructions. They are used by KVM module to give services to the thousands of guests that it is running. And this separation is there because at, in, at any point, you don't want a guest environment or a guest operating system to use or access hardware directly. Or the kind of, we, want to, we want to kind of uh, multiplex the hardware across different guests. Right? So that, that's why there are two modes of operation. Now let's say there are 
certain instructions provided by the server or provided by the processor or the hardware, but still to create the logical environment or the, or the virtual environment, we need to store data which is used by the logical processor. As we saw on the host system or the bare metal system, it has a lot of control registers, it has all that information when it's executing instructions, it stores and reads information from these control structures or control registers, right? So similar control structure or similar environment is created in the memory, which is called a control structure or virtual machine control structures. It's like a four kilobyte memory area allocated by the KVM module. It stores a lot of control information which is used to execute a guest environment. So it involves when, when does, while executing a guest operating system, when does, at which instruction does a guest control move from guest non-root operation mode to the root operation mode. Like in the, in, in the bare metal host environment we saw when a, when a program calls a system call, it goes from user space to kernel space, right? Similarly, in the virtualized, virtualized guest environment, at which point does a guest exits from the VM and enters the root operation mode, right? So that is that is called the when when the control moves from guest operating system to the VM, which is a KVM module, okay, virtual machine monitor module that is called VM exit. And similarly, when we a KVM module performs an operation on behalf of the guest and then returns control back to the guest environment or the guest operating system, that is called VM entry. And to do this VM exit and VM entry, it stores a lot of control information in the control fields of this control structure. Right? It has, uh, it, it has, in, it has like a 32-bit vector or 32-bit register which stores information about at which point uh, the guest environment or guest operating system exits to the virtual machine monitor and why does it exit? For example, it can it, it can exit when there is an interrupt or it can exit when it is trying to access it when there is a memory fault or some some, some sort. So at that point, control shifts to the KV module, which is a, a virtual machine monitor, and KV module will look at the exit reason of why did the guest exit from the virtualized mode, and then perform that operation and shift control back to the guest operating system. So now you have, in the hardware, you have a lot of these instructions available. Now we want to use that hardware infrastructure and provide services, and that's where the loadable kernel module comes into picture. So this KVM module converts the normal Linux kernel into a hypervisor, which creates a hypervisor mode or guest mode, or it introduces a guest mode, which is used by the guest operating system. It creates a, it creates a device like the slash type KVM, which is used by the user space program, which is QMU, to create this virtual environment for the guest operating system. Like it, it, it introduces the uh, it or it offers the services to the uh, QMU emulator where kernel IOC tells calls. It it allows you to create a virtual CPU. It allows you to create uh, virtual in interrupt chips, and it allows you to kind of synchronize the operation between the guest operating system and the uh, KVM. What is QMU? Now, we, in the kernel module uh, or in the kernel side, you have the kernel. Uh, module which converts the kernel into a hypervisor, but now you want to create multiple guests. So how do you create that? That's where the QMU emulator comes into picture, which is at the in the hardware or the in the operating system side, you have a virtual processor hardware or processor infrastructure, but you still need a PC hardware to run an operating system, right? You'll still need a console, you'll still still need a keyboard, you'll still need a mouse, or you'll still need many other hardware devices which are available in a normal system. And that infrastructure is provided by the uh, QMU emulator. So it allocates a memory, bunch of memory on in the system memory, in the, in the RAM, and it creates a guest environment in that allocated memory, right? And then on top of that, it calls the services offered by the KVM module, or the kernel virtual machine module, to interact with the uh, processor or use, use the processor to execute the guest environment, right? So how does it all look like? So you have, in the bare metal system, you have the, uh, say, hardware or the processor, which gives you 
the control registers and hardware infrastructure. On top of that, you have a kernel in KVM, which uses that hardware infrastructure to create a logical processor or a virtual guest environment. And that virtual guest environment is in turn used by the QMU to actually create the guest operating system. And that is uh, that, and in that operating system, in that guest environment, it eventually executes the guest operating system, right? So for a quick anatomy of the KVM uh, guest, this is how it functions or looks like. Yeah, that's that's about it. So, are there any questions? I guess we. It was like quite quick introduction, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Is there a lot of like differences between the Intel and AMD? And you said ARM, but there wasn't mentioned like how. Yeah. Is there a lot of difference there in terms of performance or capability? Or? Well, n not much of a difference. It's a, a, in the as in at the at the very superficial level. It's uh, all these uh, in co processors had multiple instructions, which work at a different uh, kernel mode and user space mode, like kernel different privileges, and they sort of provide the similar uh, services to create the guest environment. But of course, there are different uh, features, as in, in in terms of KVM, it uses the basic Linux kernel infrastructure to provide the services. So in, if you look at the KVM code, it's very small, as in the footprint of the KVM code is very small, because it uses a lot of kernel features. Like it doesn't do scheduling, it doesn't do mem mem memory management, all those things. Right? For that, it, it depends on the Linux kernel. And because it's, it's part of the kernel, you can use or manipulate the guest environments using the normal system commands, like shell commands, right? Which is which is different in, say, Zen or VMware or other virtualization technologies, right? Yes. How well, I haven't used the ARM64, so I, I don't I don't have the first-hand knowledge about ARM processors. Yeah. ARM64 is a bit different from, well, it's actually very different from uh, yeah, x86. So, uh, the way virtualization is implemented on ARM64 is you a, a new level or an execution level called hypervisor modes, and yeah. from there you can run uh, your operating system in supervisor modes. And, uh, so yep. it's, it's different. The yeah. way page tables work is a little bit similar. Yeah. How is how it's it's difficult to say it's better or not, but better in terms of it has a very small uh, footprint, memory footprint. So it's very flexible in that way, and it's available uh, by default in the Linux kernel. Whereas Zen works very different. Zen uh, does Zen has a Z, guest zero mode, which is which which replaces the operating system in this in this stack. Which works on the so it doesn't have a operating system layer, but Zen has certain, something called guest zero, which is uh, which works as the operating system here, which directly interacts with the hardware, and then guest one and onwards, which they are called the virtual guests. They they use the guest zero mode uh, services to work as the operating system, work as the guest environment. So guest zero is the first guest which creates the virtual environment for the rest of the guests. I guess uh, Zen patch is not totally uh, tooled by Optimian. No, no, no. So it, it's not. No, no. It's not merged in the Linux kernel as such. It, it's a very different architecture that way. Yeah. Another advantage for KVM is there is a lot of active community which is uh, very actively developing and uh, fixing bugs and troubleshooting and debugging things in KVM. So that way, it's, it's very well maintained and well developed as well. Yep. And just asking, uh, if, if you have a CPU with only two cores, right? Can I make two guests of two cores? Yeah. I mean, in total, it becomes four. Sorry, what's that? Okay. 
the host has only two cores. Two cores, yes. Then I make a guess that uses two cores. Okay. Then I make another one more guess that that also uses two cores. Yes. Those those will be the virtual virtual cores. Yeah. Yes, yes. No, those will be the virtual processes as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that that should be possible. Yes. Will there be a, like a slowdown in speed? Yeah. It it they might, but that should be possible. Yeah. Slightly ahead yeah. of schedule. Yes. Um, so um, I would say let's take a well. Yeah. So the next talk is scheduled to start at fourteen thirty. Yes. We have ten minutes. Ten minutes. Thank so you so much for coming. Yes. <laughs>